Hello, fellow guitar geeks. This is the new Hammertone Overdrive from Fender. So this is one of the new affordable range of pedals from Fender called the Hammertone series. There's a whole bunch of them, not exactly every effect under the sun, but certainly the majority of the ones you might need. The Hammertone series pedals range between $79 and $99, and this is one of the cheaper ones coming in at $79. But that's of course the recommended pricing, so you should be able to see prices a little lower than that. So let's take a look at the pedal. At the top, we've got the tone knob, which to my ears acts like uh, like the tone knob on a guitar. So when you have it at 10, it's fully open. And then you can back off and make it darker when you reduce it from, from 10 to all the way to, to zero. Um, and then we've got a pre-mid boost, which is how much mid frequencies this pedal is going to boost. So all the way from 10 to zero again. Then we've got level, and then we've got gain, which is also called drive. In this video, I'm going to test the Hammertone Overdrive with a variety of guitars and amps. Then I'm going to show you some specs and open it up, and then I'll review the pedal at the end of the video. But now let's hear it with my top five tones. <laughs> It is super loud in here right now. I'm pumping this through some vintage V30s, uh, the Harley Benton cab, and then i am got that going through the Marshall SV20. So everything you've heard so far has been through the Marshall. I'll also play it through the Fender Deluxe Reverb and through the Boss Katana in a minute, just to, uh, to compare those three sounds, because it does sound very, very different on those three amps. Speaking of which, it also sounds very, very different um, depending on which guitar you plug into, unsurprisingly. And I think I think this this overdrive is built for strats. So this sort of bluesy um, Jimi Hendrix, John Mayer, sort of John Frusciante kind of blues. <laughs> This kind of thing just lends itself to the pedal, whereas the more rock, humbucker, sort of Les Paul style is less so. So for me, this this overdrive is a blues, rock, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, John Mary kind of low gain to really mid-driven gain, Stevie Ray Vaughan style. Anything else, it, it um, it's not really, really pumping it for me. So what I mean by that is if I play the same thing on the Les Paul as I do on the Strat, the humbuckers from the Les Paul tend to get a little bit lost in the tone. I'll just play something simple that uses several notes in this sort of pentatonic area. <laughs> actually sounded pretty good, but um, it kind of gets lost, the clarity gets lost, and it's really subtle, but to my ears, the Strat and the single coils are coming through nicely and cleanly, and then the Les Paul sort of sound, humbucker sound, gets a little bit, a little bit mushy, and I prefer the Strat sound with this pedal. Although I did really just enjoy that almost Sweet Child of Mine sound. Darn it. I don't know if I proved my own point there, but what I'm trying to say is that I can hear the clarity of the Strat, I can't hear the clarity of the Les Paul, this suddenly gets really dark super dark. That takes me on to the controls itself. So we've got this pre uh, mid boost gains and the tone. So I'm going to leave the tone at 10 most of the time because anything less than 10 seems to really darken it up. So let's let's take that mid boost, uh, mid boost pre mid boost out of it gain about 
where's 10? There's 10, about halfway, and um, bridge humbucker, and I'll mess around with the tone. So this is tone at 10, and I'll play something and gradually reduce the tone. <laughs> I think my ears might be slightly um, adjusting to the tone, but you can hear that as soon as I come off that 10, it gets dark real quick. So um, I, I generally leave the tone on 10 for my favorite sounds. And then we need to talk about the pre-boost. So this is boosting the mid frequencies and I'll, I'll play something and gradually increase those mids. <laughs> So let's go from one extreme to the other. Let's go from maximum mid boost to minimum mid boost. <laughs> I think that pre-mid boost really makes the pedal come alive and makes it a little bit more tube screamery, but without it turned on, the tone just seems a little bit less interesting, a little bit less exciting. Also, if we turn it over, ugh, take it off the board first and open it up, man, this Fender Velcro is amazing. Um, there's a little trim pot inside that we can turn and adjust the, the high frequencies. By the way, I like the fact that you can open this with a coin. That, um, that makes opening pedals much, much easier. So that's a really good feature of all the hammer tone pedals. Um, and then also you can't lose that thing, which is great. It doesn't come all the way out. You can't lose any screws. There's a battery compartment just in there. Um, and then there's our little, our little trim pot. So let's see how far up it is currently. It's currently all the way to the top. So if I turn it down, it should get darker. So I think that reduces the range of the tone pot. Let's find out. So I've got the drive about, I've got the tone all the way up, the mid boost about halfway up and the drive about halfway up with well, the gain, I should say. This is, um, this is what's gonna happen with that little trim pot. <laughs> trim pot down. Sounds like it's, it sounds like it's um, un underground, like it's a neighbor's playing your guitar. So I don't think that I want that anywhere near the bottom. I think it's already far, far dark enough. That's, that's the fuzz and this overdrive. So sticking it back at the top is kind of where I want it. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want to mess with that trim pot, but if you do want to, you can. Let's try it through those other two amps. For reference, here's that Marshall again. The Fender. And then the Boss Katana. I 
actually, I think it sounds killer to the Katana and the Fender. So even though I've preferred the Marshall and this, if you're using a Fender amp, it's going to sound nice through that. And also, surprisingly, through a solid state amp. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, um, I'm really happy to have the Katana. Uh, you can't see it. Really happy to have the Katana on the back wall now because I can really test things with something that you might be playing because I know there's lots of Katana fans on the channel. And now I have one. But it's time to review the Fender Hammertone Overdrive. So this little overdrivey beastie is coming in at between $70 and $80, depending on where you are and where it's for sale. It's not entirely available at the time this video is going on air because it's new, but um, there are links in the video description so you can check availability and prices just there. So it's cheap. I think it's well built. I like the look. I love the hammered metal look, and that's where they're getting the hammer tone uh, name from. I like the knobs. I wish you could buy these knobs separately because I'd have them on guitars and things like that. Uh, I, I think the you know the overdrive is, uh, yeah, the design is not the best design pedal ever, but if they're not putting that much money into the design of the pedal uh, aesthetically, then they're spending that money on components and build quality and R&D and making videos like this one. So I think you're getting a lot for your money. If you're into blues, I think that this is an overdrive that you can use. Rock, maybe not so much. So I, I really, really like it with the Strat. I also really enjoyed it with the Les Paul. And I kind of want to eat my words that of what I said earlier about it sounding better on the Strat. It just sounds different. However, it would go on my blues pedal board if I was playing a Strat. The SG, Les Paul, not so much. So I like it at that sort of mid gain, so around there with that pre-mid boost quite high. Tone all the way up because it is a very dark pedal. Uh, it it certainly cuts well, it cuts um, some of the bottom end, but also does seem to cut some of the sparkle at the top as well, or at least doesn't let that much sparkle through. So there's that. And if you're looking for something with a lot of top end, a lot of cutting through in that brightness area, I don't think this one's going to do it. But it is more tube screamery in that way. I like the fact that it's got top mounted jacks. I think it's going to be one of those pedals that lasts for a long time. The switch is very, very switchy. The knobs are strong and stable. I don't think that you're gonna have any issues with build quality whatsoever. Looking inside, it's built well. Touch tone wood, touch wood. I don't think Fender are gonna get many returns on these pedals because they seem to be extremely well built, you know, built like a tank kind of thing. I hope that's the case and I hope I haven't just jinxed it. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in how it sounds, you like how it looks, if that's important to you, it's got with the top mounted jacks, it's going to fit nicely. It doesn't use much current, so you can add it to your existing uh, power supply. And it's battery powered inside. Doesn't come with one, but you can stick one in there. And the fact that you can open it up at the back with a coin is really, really cool. So you don't need to, uh, to get a screwdriver out like you may, may do with some boutique pedals. Not quite as easy to access as a Boss pedal with just the thumb screw, but um, certainly there if you need it. I think the trim pot inside is pretty much useless because it's already quite a dark pedal already. Um, and most of the tone, most of that high frequency is in that top 10. As soon as you get it to about eight, it seems to jump down. So I, I just leave that around 10 unless you're actually looking for something darker. And definitely don't need to touch the trim pot. Although if you do, it doesn't seem to break anything. So that's good. Overall, there are no nasty surprises, no noises, no crackling, nothing like that. It seems like all is well in the world of Fender Hammertone pedals at the moment. So it gets my recommendation, unsurprisingly. If you like the sounds, it's not too expensive. Right, that's it. That's the end of the video. You've reached the end of the video club. And to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite, when you leave your comment telling me what you think of the overdrive pedal from Fender Hammertone series, please also include the phrase, stop. Hammer time. And that'll let me know that you watch this part and the YouTube gods will shine down merrily upon me with their clicky goodness. The next pedal in the Hammertone series is just over there. So you can go and click that if you're interested. Otherwise, subscribe if you haven't and um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Depends on how you're feeling. If you do thumbs down, click it twice to give it a super thumbs down. And I will see you at some point in the future. Take care of yourself and uh, be excellent to each other. Bye bye.